Yo, what's up guys? My name is Saratube, and with Classic only a few days away, I wanted to share my step-by-step -step guide on how I plan to become the richest player in Classic WoW. Solo, on my own, without any farming of Devil Sword leather. This is a legitimate guide, and I do plan on being one of the wealthiest players on my server. Before we start, let's put into perspective how much playtime I'm going to have to play. I do have a 9 to 5 job, so I won't be able to play for as long as some of you may be able to, and yes, I am very, very envious of you. But that being said, my goal is to play around 2 hours a day during the week, and around 8 hours total on the weekend. This brings me to around 18 hours a week to make as much bank as possible. If you think my playtime is going to be a limiting factor in achieving my goal, then I encourage you to watch the rest of the video because I know that I can get around it. I know some of you, and probably most of you, plan to rush to 60 as fast as possible, and really there is nothing wrong with that. In fact, when considering my gold making strategy, this was my original plan. You are correct in thinking that the best gold farms become available at level 60. For the average player, this is a good strategy, even in terms of gold. Doing so will allow you to unlock farms to afford your epic mount, and maybe even a little bit more. But come on, I'm Saratube, and I'm known for having some big banks in video games, so enough rambling, let's get into the guide. To start, the class I will be picking will be a rogue. This doesn't really matter a ton, so play whatever class you really want to if you're also trying to make some big bank. Since I'm rolling on a PvP server, I want a way to escape PvP situations which I find annoying or unfavorable, and the Rogue is the perfect class to do this. By dodging players, I can avoid unwanted deaths and therefore extending my active playtime in World of Warcraft. Hunters and Warlocks also have nice advantages too when it comes to farming due to their pets being able to hold more aggro. This allows for less eating and drinking downtime, which leads to more kills per hour. Before I even log into World of Warcraft on launch day, I will create three characters within the loading screen. One will be my rogue that I plan on playing, and the other two? Well, I'm not sure what class they're going to be yet, they're just going to be bank alts. Is this really necessary? Yes, yes it is. But they won't be bank alts right at the start. Both my bank alts will be humans, and the first thing I do when I log into the game is run both of them to Duskwood. Duskwood is close to Northshire and has a few chess spawn locations I'm looking to get my hands on. Another YouTuber named Grace for Days made an excellent guide on some of these spawns, and I'd highly recommend checking it out after this video. I will camp my ults at two different Duskwood chest spawns and log on to them every once in a while in hopes of finding a chest. By looting those chests, I might be able to get green items, resources, and recipes. Getting your hands on these early in the game is a huge bonus and a huge score to your gold gain. I'm not really worried about falling behind on the leveling curve, especially in the beginning. I'm not going to have as much playtime as other people anyway, so I'm going to be behind regardless. If you're going for gold, rushing to 60 is not your goal. Anyway, once I park my alts in Duskwood, I will proceed through the chaos and get my rogue to level 5. Level 5 will allow me to grab my professions, which is what I will do immediately. I plan to grab both tailoring and skinning as my primary professions, but more on those later. The two professions I want to primarily focus on is fishing and cooking. They will be essential in generating gold early, and I can also scale these skills quite nicely into the endgame. By level 5, you should have enough gold to earn at least one of these professions, so pick up fishing first. Every other profession can wait if gold is tight at this point in the game, but I'd highly recommend getting fishing first, and try to get cooking if you can too. Pick up the strong fishing rod from the fishing vendor in Stormwind if you can, again, but if you can't, just get the standard fishing rod, it's fine. Also grab three baubles as well while you're at it, they're cheap and they'll make a huge difference when it comes to leveling up your fishing. Take your fishing rod and go to Crystal Lake in Goldshire or in the Stormwind canals. I'd recommend Stormwind if you got a late start to Classic and you're on a PvP server. Avoid those time-wasting PvP shenanigans and turtle yourself inside those nice, cozy city walls. Time is money, friend! Once you hit 75 fishing, again, if you can afford it, grab Journeyman Fishing Training. If not, don't worry, we can always pick this up later. Keep all the fish you catch for leveling food, and mail any Ragrant fish or additional fish to your alts if you need more bag space. 
You're probably wondering why I made you catch all those fish so early on. Well, because now you can use your fishing rod as you level. Every zone that you enter will have schools of fish that you can actually capitalize on. My guess is that since no one will really focus on fishing training in the beginning, you can have most fish and most pools to yourself relatively uncontested during your leveling experience. You will not have to compete for herbs or ore like other players are going to have to. Occasionally, you may have to compete for a pool of fish, but I guarantee that most players think fishing is out of the way of their leveling experience, and they'd much prefer to train it at level 60. Fishing begins to pay off pretty much immediately once you hit Westfall. So, level your character to level 10, and then start the quest chains there. Do the quests and pretty much all of your questing in Westfall as close to the shoreline as you can on the west side of Westfall. Keep your eye out in the ocean for the oily blackmouth schools, as these are going to be the first fish to make you some gold. Oily blackmouth fish are used to create blackmouth oil, an essential regrant in free action potions and swim speed potions. Free action potions are a huge gold making opportunity for PvP servers, as everyone will want to get their hands on them to abuse them in PvP. And what do you think players are going to do once they hit level 60 on a PvP server? Open world PvP, of course. I think you're catching my drift here. Keep leveling fishing as you progress through the zones and make sure to fish in fishing pools for additional gold. Mail all the regrant fish to your bank alt, as well as any additional fish. Check out the fishing guide on Wowhead if you're interested in which zones carry which fish, and which fish will be the most lucrative for you. Whoa, that was almost a tongue twister. By the time you're in Westfall, hopefully early on in Westfall, you're going to want to think about picking up skinning too. We'll use skinning materials as our early gold source by vendoring all the materials. This will allow us for basic training for spells and professions, but of course, save as much gold as you can. But at the same time, don't be afraid to spend it on spells and things you need. If you so choose, you can pick it up later, but I would try to get tailoring around this point as well. You can wait on it if you want, I just kind of like to pick it up, it's really not that expensive. Either way, tailoring comes into play way down the line, I just kind of like to train it as I go. Make sure as you level up here, you're mailing all the cloth materials to your bank alts. Linen, mage weave, whatever you find, mail it to those bank alts. Do not waste your time on picking up another gathering profession and just forgetting it later to pick up tailoring. It won't be worth the time spent competing for resources during the leveling boom. Remember how I mentioned cooking? Oh yeah, let's talk about that. You're going to want to get this to 250. I know I'm just outright putting that out there, but make sure you're leveling that up as you go and focus on cooking and fishing at the same time. Reason being is you can buy the Nightfin soup recipe from the goblin Gidget Gidget I, I don't really know how to say his name, something like that, in Steamweedle Port in Tanaris. You can catch Nightfin all around Azeroth, but more on that in a minute. Nightfin Soup provides a food buff of 10 mana per 5, which is super useful for casters and is basically the best food buff for casters. It will be heavily used in raids and PvP alike. Load up and cook a bunch of this stuff if you can. Also, if you're making the trip to Tanaris to pick up this recipe, let me mention another great moneymaker while you're there. Stonescale Eel. Fishing Stonescale Eel right off the coast of Steamweedle is very profitable. In fact, Stonescale Eel is one of the two most lucrative fish in the game. It is used to create Stonescale Oil, which is used in many high-end alchemy recipes, even the Flask of the Titans. Being one of the first to have control on the Stonescale Eel market is bound to make you lots of gold. But back to the Nightfin. Nightfin is found in various areas, but I'd recommend Moonglade. Get the highest fishing bonus you can, and at least have 225 fishing, and fish during the hours of 12am to 6am server time. I know it's not super convenient, but this is the best time to get Nightfin, as you only catch Nightfin and not the counterpart, the Sunscale Fish. Sunscale Fish isn't bad, but it's not what we're looking for here. Fish between 12 and 6 a.m. to maximize your gold per hour. Cook up a bunch of that nightfin that you catch and stockpile it for when people start hitting level 60 and raiding on your server. Fishing and cooking will be the primary sources of gold for you when the server is young. But of course, we will want to move into some other money makers as we get higher levels and as people progress as well. You'll have a bit of gold saved by this point, so it's time to train some professions. I hope your stockpiling of cloth has gone well, because we're going to need a lot of it to get this tailoring up. I'm not going to go into the specifics of how you should train tailoring or any of your professions for that matter. If you want to see how to do that, go check out some other guides on YouTube. I don't know anyone specifically, but we're not going to talk about that here. There's lots of ways to make money with tailoring, but we're only going to touch on one in this video. 
and that's making Mooncloth. See, Mooncloth is such an amazing moneymaker because it passively makes you gold. Seriously, it's literally no effort gold. First, you'll need 250 tailoring, so that's a necessity. Of course, that's going to take a while and take a lot of resources, but invest in it, it is completely worth it. Grab that and head to Winterspring to find the goblin Kia? Q-I-A, again, the goblin names, they're kind of weird, who sells the Mooncloth recipe for 2 gold. The reason that Mooncloth is passive gold is because the cooldown to create one Mooncloth is 4 days. It takes 2 fell cloth, you spin it into Mooncloth, and bam, you've already made 3 to 4 gold. Doing this anytime Mooncloth is off cooldown for a month nets you about 26 gold. Doesn't seem like a lot, but in vanilla, it really adds up. Having this on at least one character will be enough, but feel free to get it on alt characters as well to increase your passive gold gain. I think we've touched enough on our profession strategy with how much we've been discussing it already, so let's go ahead and touch on what farms I'm going to be doing. Keep in mind, I'll still be around level 35 to 40 by the time I max out my professions, so I'll still have 20 levels to gain. For those 20 to 25 levels, I'm going to focus on mob grinding the entire way, specifically on mobs that are not too hard to kill and that will give me really nice profits on the way. To start the list, at level 35, I will be focusing on ex exclusively killing adolescent whelplings, the dreaming whelplings, and swamp jaguars in the Swamp of Sorrows. The whelplings drop flame sacks, which will be in high demand on the auction house as they're used in fire protection potions and gear. With many people entering Molten Core for their first raid, it's no doubt they're going to want some fire protection, so this is a huge gold opportunity. In addition, the flame sacks are also used in the Dragon Breath chili recipe, so if you get your hands on that recipe, there's a ton of gold making opportunities behind that. The whelplings also drop a fair amount of greens, which add on to your gold per hour. You can also get a BOE pet called the Emerald Whelpling from killing the Dreaming Whelplings, but it's very rare and it's a very small chance. If you get this thing though, it will be worth huge amounts of gold. Not right at the start, but bank that thing and I promise it's going to be worth it in the long run. I'll kill Swamp Jaguars when there's no Whelplings left, and I'll vendor the Grey Drops from them. I'll also have skinning on my character, so that will also increase my gold per hour, as you can skin the Whelplings, and you can skin the Jaguars. Once I reach around level 40, I'm going to head to the Blasted Lands to yet kill some more Whelplings. The Scalding Whelplings are level 41 to 43, and this is sort of the same idea as the previous grind, collecting Flame Sacks and the good greens that they drop. The Grey Drops, again, are good here as well, and Skinning will increase your gold per hour. Don't kill any elite mobs if you're following this guide, it's not worth your time, I will be specifically avoiding them, and I'll level here at these Whelplings until level 43 or 44. In my current iteration of this plan, this is sort of where I get stuck. From level 44 onward, I'll focus on just leveling up to get to level 53 by questing. I know, obviously, I won't be making a ton of money during this stage, but I'll focus on professions at the same time to make sure my gold income doesn't run stagnant, skinning all the mobs I kill just to get a little more gold. The next money making slash leveling grind that I'm going to do will take place from levels 53 all the way up to 60. I will be killing each tier of plague bats in the eastern plague lands until I reach level 60. The regular plague bats level 53 to 55, the noxious plague bats level 54 to 56, and the monstrous plague bats level 56 to 58. When I'm farming these mobs, I'm looking to pick up all of their gray drops as they're worth a fair bit to the vendor. The plague bats have a higher chance chance than most mobs to drop rare blues and purples, but I wouldn't really get your hopes up on those. The green drops are frequent and expensive, so I would recommend disenchanting them on your bank alt or selling them to the auction house, although this may be difficult in the beginning. Again, skinning will add to your gold per hour. After a long, painful, and most likely really, really boring grind, I'll hit level 60. And here's where the real gold making starts. By stockpiling so much gold throughout my leveling experience, I'll start to be able to play the auction house. Some players don't really know what that means. What do I mean by that exactly? Well, buying items which are low in supply, but high in demand, and trying to corner specific niche markets. Even if you can't corner a market completely, there is opportunity in buying a cheap listing on the auction house and selling it back for profit. Is this boring? To most people, yes, but I really enjoy it and I really find it exciting. 
I'll be making plenty of detailed guides and live streams on how to play the auction house, how to tell if an item is at a low price, and what items are best to flip on the auction house for profit, so stay tuned to the channel by subscribing to see those videos. Along with playing the auction house, I'll be doing some further level 60 elite mob grinds, either solo or with a friend. More on those grinds to come in future videos. I'm sure I've just about talked your ear off by this point, but wait, what about those bank alts we talked about earlier? Oh right, can't forget about those. I will be using these two characters to store items from my main character as I level up through my mob grinding. I'll be keeping items which will be higher in demand as the player base progresses towards 60 and into raids such as the Nightfin Soup and the Flame Sacks. The bank alts will have professions of their own as well, and I suggest if you're following this guide to get tailoring again on one of these bank alts, one of them for making Mooncloth, and as well as getting enchanting. I know I'll have a ton of green items in my bag that need to be, you know, disenchanted with this strategy, and if you follow this too, you're going to have the same amount of green items, so disenchanting will be a key in getting Regrance to either sell on the auction house or to invest into training enchanting on one of your characters. Anyway, I know that was a lot, but that's it. That's my plan to become one of the richest players on my server. This really only covers my gold making throughout my leveling experience. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested in learning how to maximize your gold stack once you hit level 60. More videos on that to come. There will be plenty of videos coming soon on how to play the auction house and how to flip items for profit in Classic WoW as well. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I cannot wait to see you all in Classic WoW.